Stuart, did I hear you say on, on Qatar, you're absolutely having it. The Premier League <coughs> season starts. Yep. Qatar, World Cup 2022 in the middle. And then the resumption and f- final stages of the Premier League. You're having it. I, I look at it as a as an international player, if you like. For how many years have we bellyached about our players are tired at the end of a long season? I mean, oh, going sure. into every tournament, that's all you hear. I, I look at it like this. I think it will be quite refreshing. I really do. They're in a warm climate as well for the players. So away from the, the football intensity, is it'll be quite relaxing. The travel implications are not big while you're there as a player or us working on the media side of it. Yeah. I And you've got to look at the other nations around the world. When the tournaments are in their normal period of time, you've got to cancel certain seasons. It's not just Europe-centric here. You know, this is the World Cup. So it's a little bit selfish of us in Europe to say we only want a World Cup when our season finishes mm. in, in June time, you know. So, but it's it's all to do. What with a the, good view yeah, to take, though. No, yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good view in terms of it's an adventure, isn't it? You know, it's a one-off. Yeah. It, it, if it goes well, will they do it again? I think it's to do with the climate, Jim. Really, where they've made that adjustment. I, in my mind, though, if I'm still a competitor, I'm thinking normally I I'm going after things to win trophies my club side, and then it's a case of okay, let's do it for the for our country. Now we I could be a World Cup winner. And then have to play another 16, 17 Premier League games. So I think that's going to be a little bit... Maybe I'm going in with even more confidence. Um, but it's something else that will be brand new. We'll be welcoming players back to your club, potentially at Man City, Liverpool, wherever. And they might well have won a World Cup mm. and they've got to get feet back on the ground and then go after again that's on a the Premier point, League. Sure. So it's a different dynamic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, listen, there's give and take on, on all things. If you have a normal World Cup, I remember um, coming back from... Italy 90, let's say. Uh, I think our last game was on the 4th of July. Forrest were back in on the 8th of July. I I come back, I said to Cluffy, is it all right to take a, a, a couple of weeks off and have a break? He said, no, I want you in because you're going to Sweden with me. But you can have the two weeks leading into the first game of the season off. Wow. And he would have seriously said, you can do that. It's not a problem to me. Right, Just turn right. up and play the first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I can't do that. I won't be fit, you know. But yeah. So there's compromise on all things. I, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's a, it's a brilliant idea for us to showcase it and have a look. You've got to look at those players as well that are not going to the World Cup. So they've got probably a five-stroke, six-weeks window there where... I would think their club managers will give them two weeks off. Yeah. Uh, and then they're getting back in from, if it was me, I'd get them back in for a mini pre-season, take them to hot climbs somewhere. So as a player, you're thinking, brilliant, I've got a condensed amount of games, which we're going to talk about. It's more difficult for those players though, isn't it, Stu? The ones who are not going, the Hallands and people, everyone's saying, oh, great, great, but he's got a momentum now and then he's going to have to down tools for well, what, six weeks and yeah, then come back again? Yeah, but Mark, how many how many times do you say we need a mid-season break in England? They've been barking on about that not for years. six weeks, though. It's a balanced thing, isn't it? I think you can be too long out of the game. Oh, man, so, come on. I th- I'm with Stuart on this. I think every which way you look at it, there are positives. Jim, yeah. I, Jim, I'm going to enjoy this World Cup in the middle of the season. I'm going to take it for what it is. I don't mm. want to see it every year, every World Cup that we play in the middle of the season because I think it's too disruptive. To, to our Premier League game it certainly is and I think we're it, very it might be disruptive yeah but then again where, where's your mentality is it club based or is it international player based do you want the best for England I mean at the end of some seasons the players have a, a two three week break potentially before they play an international game yeah you know with FA Cups and you've got Precisely. preparation for the yeah. international one thing Gareth will know, and, and it's not ideal because he's picking his squad will probably get together on the Sunday after the last game of the season and they've only got eight days before their first game. But he knows all of those players that get on board that aeroplane and match fit. That's Some, what he will that's know. Right. So, somehow, though, this season's only going to finish a few weeks later than, than it ordinarily would have done. And we're squeezing a World Cup into the middle of it. Yeah, but Martin, imagine if weeks. England win it. Mm. Stuart says, imagine if England win it, for talking sake, and these players come back here... And reimmerse themselves in the Premier League. There'll be a carnival oh, atmosphere from that point around onwards. Of course, but I, I, so I'm a player, and I've been there when a, players have come back to the dressing room having won a World Cup, and you've got to get their feet back on the ground. 
it's not an easy thing. This happened in France. We were lucky. We had good individuals, Manu Petit, Patrick mm. Vieira. Right. But it was a concern that, you know, are their heads in the clouds now? Or will we get them back working, concentrating, trying to win for Arsenal? We were lucky we got them back again. So uh, this is, a, on a serious note, as we approach half ten, the, the Premier League returns for a seven-week burst and then the World Cup begins. Stuart, what, what's the biggest challenge during this period for, for managers and and players is it is that a physical one or is it more psychological um i think it's a combination of both i think if you keep barking on to your players it's going to be a really tough period they'll, they'll believe it they'll buy into that uh for me you've got to conquer the psychology of the squad first you know what i mean the only message i always like to put out to, to my players as a coach or a manager was like we're fitter and stronger than the opposition and all of a sudden people start to believe that you know, West Ham, I mean, we were talking about, and we're going to talk about the mm. potential injuries to players in the Premier League last season. It's as high as it's ever yeah, been, yeah. potentially. At West Ham, it wasn't, by the way. Our stats come in from the seasons before, and I think we had, uh, I think there was something like 15% of training days missed and match days missed. We were up into the 90s last year with a smallish squad. So if you sign players that can see the games out, you sign Steven Gerrard, Lampard, yeah, yeah. Martin, they see the games out. They play the games. They're robust individuals. Sure. Uh, We're going to get into that, actually, Stuart. But, uh, that's an interesting one. Psychological or physical? The challenge, Martin? Well, I, I'm, I'm wanting to talk... What Stuart, both, I'm Stuart just says. walking what Stuart's just talked about there in terms of the West Ham situation. If we bring it back to then, I believe that David Moyes doesn't play a high-pressing game. I don't think it's a high-energy game. I think they sit quite withdrawn... And they don't go after opponents, and they can pretty well control games from there and break. Mm. So that might be linked, Jim, to the, the injuries that they get because at the moment this game's changed. Everyone's pressing, it's high energy, and because of that, I believe we're getting more ha muscle injuries, hamstrings, uh, and and Liverpool. That might be the the root of some of their problem at the mm. start of this season. We've had so, a really important start. So for season. the next seven weeks with, with the Premier League, are we going to hear Qatar, Qatar, Qatar all the time? That's at the back of everybody's mind for not, the players. No, not within the clubs. Within the clubs, it's like right, we're back now. We we need to finish in in top position. Look at Arsenal. Want to try and retain that? Want to go off to do the World Cup? Yeah, with our blessing. But first of all, you got to do what you do best for us. Get your team to the as high as a, the table as you can. Answer me this, Martin. Two weeks before the World Cup starts, if you're a top player and you're in these plans, are you going into a challenge as as you would do normally? Of course, you, you just honestly, to, honestly, yeah, you have to be one hundred percent focused. I think it, where it might have been difficult is these these two England games that you've just come out of because you're trying to sort of uh, manage your energy levels. You know, you're focusing. You've done your England bit. You've qualified for the World Cup. And now here we are. We've got top couple of friendly games, and your mind's not maybe in it. Yeah, but you can't just down tools. You've got to give your best. Uh, it's not like that, Jim. You can't pick and choose. You have to do. You you get found out quickly if you if you pick and choose. Jim, can I pick up on this? When I was England under twenty one manager, there was this perception that English players uh, at the end of a season had played much more than the Germans or the Spanish and whatever. So I asked the analysis uh, boys at, at, at England to to sit down and get me the exact figures. Compare our under twenty ones at the time against the likes of Ozil and Neuer and people of that ilk that were playing against the Joe Hearts of this world and whatever. They played more games. The Spanish boys played more games than the English boys. But there was a perception. Yeah, but and to, is our game though, like the Premier League game is like coveted throughout the world, isn't it? Because the high octane energy, the fans, the atmosphere, we play at a really high yeah, high game, level. But is it more intense? Mind. Does that bring about more injury? Does that bring about fatigue? Do they do that in Spain? Is it foot on the ball past it? Yeah. Italy, oh, yeah. If you look at the statistics in Italy and Spain, they're way down on injury levels that you get. Whereas we're up there because, and it's and we've got mostly foreign players. So it's not the the English. It's the, it's mm. got to be the product. It's got to be what we're putting our players through because of the intensity of the games. I okay. do take on board the the injury situation. I do, and I'm not oblivious to it. But there's a little bit of me. You turn up at a stadium and the groundsmen don't want you to go on the pitch. Now all of a sudden we don't want the players to play. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> what, I know. what makes our, what, I know. what I makes know. our game so great? Playing the game at high energy. That's exactly. Why our stadiums are full. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Friday mornings from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.